What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, I've been given access to a starter demo of Ixion. This is a game that's been described to me by the internet and also by the developers who have sort of taken up the mantle willingly as Frostpunk in space. Uh, so I assume we're probably going to be chewing on some poor human being's leg bone at some point after making a hard decision what to do when resources get low. Uh, but this demo was sent on over, so we're going to go ahead and give it a look. The game, as I understand it, is kind of like, people are waiting for this one. People are ready. And so I'm excited to be your host. Welcome on in. If after watching this you wanted to check the game out for, your pro for yourself or maybe put it on your wish list or whatever... Uh, I've got a link for you down below in the description. Aside from that, you can also take a look and see a link to my Twitch stream, my Discord, you know, my curator, all that kind of stuff. All my associated links, they're all down there. My spiel is out of the way. Let's go ahead and spend about 25, 30 minutes taking a look at the game and see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on, shall we? Okay, that was actually pretty impressive. There's something always like vaguely inspiring, even with digitizations of space launches. Is now docked. Oh, cool! We have a robot friend. Powered and pressurized. Munchy decontamination protocol online. Disembarkation. I'll tell you what, after that flight, I need to initiate a munchy Message decontamination protocol. Minutes. We need to find some Doritos Welcome up in here. I'm dying. I'm hungry. Property of Dolus Aerospace Engineering Corporation. You will soon be given your assignments, but until then, please continue to wait near the docking bay. We hope you have a productive voyage, and would like to thank you for your contribution towards humanity's future. Administrator. I am Eden, the personal assistant installed on board the Tycoon. In accordance with the Munchie Protocol, I have been designed to take into consideration your complete psychological profile so that I may more accurately respond to any needs you may have. 
My primary purpose is to ensure the Tycoon's automated systems function efficiently. I will keep track of the tasks that are necessary for you to fulfill your prerogative of reaching Proxima Centauri and carrying out field research, mining operations, manufacturing protocols, and Dolo's colonization tests. All right, so first order of business, uh, Doritos and a cup of coffee. AI, make it happen. Chop, chop. Let's do this thing. Administrator, I wanted to introduce you to your first tasks personally. I'm Dolos' cryonics lead, Marduk council member Giovanni Batista. So, let's see. Your first objective will be to begin setting up essential infrastructure aboard the Tycoon meeting the environmental conditions that are required to support your crew. Having laid these foundations, you will then oversee the installation of the Vol engine and perform a short test jump to Proxima Centauri. Upon arrival, your research teams will carry out a brief survey of local space, gather a few rock and coal dust samples, fire up the colonization protocol, begin building the foundations for mankind's future, yada yada yada. And then, you'll come back. Now, in order to achieve this, you'll need to familiarize yourself with the Tycoon's core functions. It's no big deal. There's the production, stockpiling and distribution of resources, construction, balancing of power output with allocation. Oh, and space exploration, you know, setting out expeditions and all that. Basically, everything needed to establish scientific advancement and harmonious autonomy on board the Tycoon following the first test of its Vol engine. Eden's gonna display and keep track of your main objectives. Oh, and Administrator, don't let the position go to your head. Veneer has insisted to center Dolos' focus on the Tycoon, but this mission is just in preparation for our next project, the Protagoras. The Marduk Council worked damn hard to pull this mission together ahead of schedule. So, toe the line, do as you're told, and bring the Tycoon back in one piece. Leave the grand gestures and saving of mankind from ecosystemic destruction to us, okay? Roger we that. Advice. We don't all think like Veneer Dolos. As of yet, no human law has been officially established amongst the stars. That sounds like an opportunity knocking to me. All right, so here we are. Uh, we have had all of our stuff unlocked. Let's take a look around the UI. And so we've got some iron over here. We've got some alloys. Okay. We've got ourselves some carbon, some polymers. We've got silicates. We've got hydrogen. So basically it looks to me like we basically got like a baseline material that we need. And then it can be refined into like a better version effectively. And I, I think that's denoted kind of like by the little arrows that they have going on around here. I would guess that the hydrogen is more than likely how we are going to get ourselves situated with our power. Uh, we've also got waste that we need to figure out how to dispose of. Just, like, throw it out the airlock, dude. It's space. We have endless, like, just launch it. You know what I mean? Just have, like, a tube that we shove the garbage into and just, thunk, it just, like, fires it way out into the ether. So that it's, like, not in orbit, but, like, you know, like, floating through space somewhere. But that's a problem we'll deal with later, dude. We have just unlocked the endless frontiers of imagination. Let us begin littering. All right. So, it wants us to drop in some stuff. So we've got stockpiles and we've got workshops. This allows for the construction of other buildings inside the Tycoon, sending a construction mech to construction sites. So I'm gonna guess that that guy is probably our first most important building. And we more than likely want this dude to be centralized in such a way, oh, I can build roads too. Yeah, I should probably do that. All right, let's connect all this stuff real fast. I can I bulldoze this right here so delete a road there we go so like what if I take back a road over here I'd like this to just connect cleanly but I don't know what is this right here is it just like debris to collect the available resources this building must be connected with an active stockpile that can store the resources okay so that's our starting out resources right there I would say let's go ahead and we'll drop our first workshop like right there and as soon as that's up, did that build instantly? Oh, it did not. Okay, so like workers or something are going to cruise on over here and make this happen. 
It looks like it's actually fairly active. We got lots of little spacemen, spice construction workers running around. Okay, little dudes, get it done. Uh, that's been finished off, so now that we have that built, I'm going to guess we probably need a stockpile. So that's going to be the next most intelligent thing for us to build. We weren't left with a lot of space to play around with that, but I'm going to put the stockpile right there. Because what I'd like to do is we're going to take a road and wrap this around, and we're going to try to keep everything sort of within like a certain proximity of the stockpile, I think. How long is this going to take? Mm. Is that like reversed? How strange. Okay. Well, I wanted to go up here and take a look at what's going on over there, but it looks like our camera is actually locked to the... Oh my god in heaven. Hi! It's space. Okay, that's pretty cool. We're actually in that inner ring right there. I assume that it's using the ring to generate artificial gravity would be my guess, as long as you have the centrifugal force. Although the way I always pictured in my head is because it's rotating this way, you would want people's feet to be on a plane that's like this right here, basically. I don't know, maybe I envisioned it inside my head wrong, but the gravity seems to be working, all right? None of the people are complaining. It appears to be happening. All right, so our stockpile over here. Choose a resource to manage. Alloys, I guess? So it looks like each one of these is responsible for one type of resource. And it looks like we've got little shovel bots that are moving things around. That would make me guess, oh, we have new options. All right, so we can house 15 crew inside of there. And it takes us 15 alloys in order to get that done. I don't want to go too mad dog crazy with stockpiles. It looks like we do have a lot more stuff over here. And so I would think it's probably a rad idea for us to run a road back that way. Just so we can get access to all those resource piles. And so it looks like our construction bot that came from our construction hub is going to lay that down right there. That's good. That's very, very good. How much does this hold? It holds 100. Okay. Good to know. Uh, so how many people do we have? We have 85 people right there. That means, at the bare minimum, we're going to need six housing blocks in order to make that work. Okay. Inside structurals, we have docking bays. That allows us to get mining ships, but it appears as though we need electronics in order to make that work. It looks like we can get a refectory. It will prepare 10 food for up to 100 people every 0.5 cycles. I do think that feeding our crewmen is a really, really good idea. But since I have push pause, I'm going to take my time and kind of go through everything we have available. We have an infirmary, just in case we have any accidents that allow people to heal on up. And it looks like that requires iron as well. And it looks like our tech lab. So we have a number of options in front of us. Let's go ahead and we will start with a refectory. The refectory is quite large, though. And it doesn't look like we have the space to kind of squoze it in at the moment. At least until all this stuff has been gathered. Oh, it looks like I command them to gather things. Okay, so when I clicked on that, it might just be a happy coincidence. But it looks like when I clicked on that right there, it activated that for active gathering. Uh, okay, transmission. I have established a connection with Dolus's lead data scientist, Emma Klein. Administrator. Mr. Dolos has made it abundantly clear when it comes to security. Given the importance of the Tycoon, we must have full control over what is happening inside the station. My name is Emma Klein, Dolos' lead data scientist and member of the Marduk Council. My department have just completed final synchronization between Eden and our data treatment tool, the DLS. The DLS, or Data Listening System, is capable of scanning, recording, and parsing exchanges of any kind. The DLS programming that is a part of Eden will filter all data collected and bring to your attention only the most relevant information. It will also provide you with a condensed overview of any situations that may arise and formulate potential future outcomes. It will permit you to give direct orders without having to go through additional unnecessary paperwork. Eden will then take care of everything via their DLS accreditation. As is often the case with tools produced by my department, I think you'll find that once you start using the DLS, you'll never be able to do without it. Oh, and before I let you go ahead and start writing history, Dr. Munshi, our lead medical expert, wanted me to bring to your attention a possible side effect of vole jumping. 
Whilst there is a correlation between prolonged space travel and the development of early onset dementia, he believes that a vol jump has the potential to accelerate this process, although this is yet to be proven. His recommendation is for you to immediately send any crew members. One second, I'm gonna try to get a food building in. Oh, we already got the refectory, okay. So I think the refectory is gonna gather the food once we're good to go. We've got 300 food to play around with, so I'm just trying to be the mindful about things. Characteristic or symptomatic behavior to an infirmary, as these facilities are equipped to treat the mind as well as the body. Remember that all of your actions and choices are being reported by Eden. We are not affiliated with any national or even international organization. The only people that you are answerable to are those of us who sit on the Marduk Council, who represent the collective interests and ambitions of the company. Okay, so I think we're going to need a stockpile that actively holds the food. I don't think there's any way around that. So I'll go ahead and we'll put the food stockpile right there. I don't know if I'm making good placement decisions right now, but like I'm going to I'm going to make some calls and I'm going to hope that it works out. There's an event administrator tycoon crew members currently have no means of collecting food supplies from storage. Analysis suggests impending crises due to an influx of hungry crew. Subsequent accident rates are predicted to go up. Neocons social ecosystem theory suggests that refectories are used. Okay, so they're just telling me that I should build a refectory. If I already built the refectory, are we good to go? It looks like it checked it off the list. So, and look, I'm ahead of the curve with the second stockpile. Aha! I will not fail you, Dr. Munchie. Dr. Munchie's just sitting over there like, man, I used to work for Ben and Jerry's. I have no idea what I'm doing over here. They said they wanted a guy with a thematic name to help with food distribution on some space program. I, I, I designed Sherry Garcia. I don't know. Somehow I ended up over here. I'm in way over my head. And I'm like, yo, me too, bro. Every single day on the internet. Uh, we'll go ahead and gather up food real fast. There we go. So that we can start feeding our crew. I do like these little connection lines that they give you. And then with the building placement, you've also got the green arrows. So this game has checked several boxes for me so far in terms of quality. Uh, we're going to build a road, but we need to clear some space. So our road will go to there. And it will also go to there. We've got a little bit of dead space right there. But I think we'll be okay. Once these roads are built, we'll get this guy out of the way and we'll start putting in some iron. And we'll get that rocking. Our iron storage is unfortunately quite full right now. I don't know if there are upgrades. Oh, there's a phone call. Moshi Moshi, Splatter Cat to Sue. I have an incoming transmission from Marduk Council Member Henry Bargelow. Bonjour, Administrator. What a wonderful day to embrace your fate, don't you think? I'm Henri Barjaville, writer, philosopher, lobbyist, but most of all member of the Marduk Council. I have taken the liberty of personally arranging an exchange out of courtesy with the Oshanabi, a ship in high orbit belonging to one of our commercial allies, the Ashton Guys. Even so, they are a small organization the Ashtangites are important partners who share the same pragmatic, moralistic, and spiritual outlook as we do. One second, we got an event. Some crew members have no quarters to live in during human history. Homelessness has been an indicator of civilizational decay. Oh, it's still playing the conversation behind me. Uh, 12 cycles to build houses. Okay. I think I can do that. We will start with a housing block possibly over here. Unfortunate that I couldn't squoze that into place, but there we go. For them to share in our successes. Please assign a cargo ship so that we can check the trade routines. Administrator, trust in genetic connectors. Self similar space will reveal the pattern. I don't see how coitus is going to help right now, but you know, I appreciate the offer. All right, let's get these houses built. We've got a couple constructor bots. They're already delivering things. The mech is assembling. We had six cycles to get these buildings knocked out, and so I think I can do that. Uh, I think it was 15 per, so we're sitting at 45 right now. That means that I need another three if we want to fully satisfy housing needs. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll probably... I don't know how I want to place this. I mean, if it fits... It fits, so we'll go ahead and let it happen. I'm gonna go ahead and gather metal from wherever I can along the way. 
What do we have over here? We have another metal supply, so they're drawing from that as well. I can't decide if only one craft can occupy any given building area. It's kind of hard to tell. I also don't know if we're going to get this done in time for six cycles. What did they say? Oh, 12 cycles. Okay, 12 cycles, we're probably okay. Six cycles, eh, cutting it a little bit close. Uh, we may have a riot on our hands. We may get beat to death with space rebar. I don't know. So there's good news. We got most of the housing done, and it's only been like four cycles. So I think as long as you jump on top of it quickly, you should have totally acceptable amounts of time to get this done. Uh, power consumption, I do think we're going to have to come up with a power situation pretty soon. Food storage still looks okay. I'm just trying to keep a weather eye on things because, like, if this game... They keep describing it as cyberpunk. I'm sorry, as frostpunk. And so, anyways, frostpunk made me nervous uh, because they had all these little complicated gotchas they'd throw at you. And so I'm trying to be mindful of taking care of things early so that we have a little bit of, like, buffer for when things start to go wrong, but maybe they're not gonna come at me that quickly. The next task that we have on hand is that we need to make a docking bay. Oh cool, we got that done right there too. Very nice. Uh, I'll probably have a road that runs back this way just so we have available resources for gather. And we'll take that all the way to the edge. It looks like we can actually expand into these neighboring tiles as well. That'll be fun to kind of explore. Constructobot is doing his thing. Down here we have, what is that? Polymers. Okay, well we don't have polymer storage yet. I assume there's CPUs around here somewhere too. Uh, let's take a look, so we've got factories. We've got a tech lab, that allow us to get new buildings. We've got a docking bay right there. That's what they want me to build. But I need to figure out how we manufacture electronics first because we don't really have silicates. So, I don't know when that's going to be readily available. I do think if we can get that stuff gathered up and swapped on out, we'll be in good shape. But as far as our fleets go, we have no mining ships and we have no cargo ships. Okay. I think the tech lab is up next. I, I think that, oh my god, she's a big girl. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a beefcake of a building. Didn't expect it to be that grandiose, but here we are. Uh, we don't have the, I'm gonna have to build some more stuff before we can fit that anywhere. These resource piles are just obnoxiously all over the place. Okay, let's get a stockpile going for more iron. I'm gonna try to keep all my iron related industry over here, but I can't promise that that's gonna work out super well. Uh, but another iron stockpile sounds good. Over here, it would seem to me as though we could drop in, like, two stockpiles right there as well. And we'll designate those to other resources that we have laying around. So, for example, one for the polymer pile. And I don't see... I don't see computer chips, so I'm guessing I'm going to have to manufacture that. But that's okay. Okay, so things are going to be moved around a little bit. So here's the problem, right? I got a little over-enthusiastic about the demo. And I started just, like, stamping stuff all over the place and didn't pay attention to the objective. And so, my colony died. Alright? My colony died. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I got sidetracked by all the shiny things that I could build, and I started playing with stuff on that last edit. And then the game doesn't save in the demo, and so I killed off my colony on X, and there was no way to load it. So, like, egg on my face. But what the game wants us to do now is it wants us to make cargo ships, and it wants me to make a scientific vessel. And you do that through the docking bay over here. And so I'm going to give that a nice swing and see if I can get that all taken care of. So there's a cargo ship. We can do that. It's going to take 10 polymers. And we have polymers right there. So we need a polymer storage a stockpile. So let us get one of those all nice and stamped out. And you will see our little buddies are going to go on over here. And they're going to make sure that we have the stuff that we need in order to get by. Build away, little buddies. Build. So, yeah. If you see any buildings moved around or anything else like that, it's because, you know. I have ADD. Maybe. Possibly. I don't know. Either way, I get distracted very, very easily. You guys have been here for like 10 years. You know how it goes. Sometimes I get distracted, and this time it had catastrophic effects on the people that live inside the domiciles and inside my colony. It had bad effects on them. 
Uh, I probably should have paid attention to the objective, so let's go ahead and do that. We got a cargo ship coming inside of our docking bay. It says it's going to take 10 of the polymers, so I'll try to get that mashed out about as soon as possible. Ooh, and now that that's done, look, there's like a little animation and stuff. It's all like, bee doo bee. Like, this game has a big Wayland yutani vibe. I don't know, with all the red strobes and things like that, it's got that feeling. So while that builds, we can take a look, and you can actually go outside to the station here if you want to. And you can actually, what I found when I was getting sidetracked, you can build stuff on the surface of the station. We don't have any options right now, but you can build stuff. There's also like a research hub that you get, just like in most colony builders that allows you to get new technologies and whatnot. There's our first adorable little cargo ship. Oh my god, okay, let's not do that. I still haven't quite got the hang of the rotational camera, but there it is. We have a cargo ship, and then we also need a science vessel. So there we go, science vessel. It's up, up, and away. We're going to lose five workers to that. Little bit of a bummer, but they must be sacrificed to the machine. All right, the gears and cogs require the oil of blood. Uh, so it wants me to configure my cargo ship to go get food from the fleet management when menu. Okay, cargo ship, uh, yeah, go ahead and retrieve me some food. Apparently, it's called the biceps. All right, it's a big, beefy cargo hauler. Our spaceship, our science ship, is looking like it's about to be rattled together as well. So hopefully that goes well. I did notice that, like, not just from dying, but even before I died, I noticed that we didn't have a way to produce food. And so now it all makes more sense. There we go. Okay, so off goes our science ship. I'm sure they're going to have me send that out to do something, too. Resolve a moon event. Okay. I would love to resolve a moon event. The moon. There it is. Uh, so let's see here. The abandoned base camp. Summary intelligence collected by the abandoned base camp. It's out of commission. The auxiliary systems are operational and may be used to restore power. There is an average possibility of finding resources. Okay. Okay. I think we could pretty easily do that. And so, like, I just send you on over to the moon. Okay. Off, off, and away he goes. Although I do like how he actually moves. He slingshots with the orbit that we're going for right there. There he goes. Look at him slingshotting out here. All right. Summary of intelligence. We already said that. Transmission from the Hope's team. We have reached UN base using provided coordinates. It is abandoned and depressurized, but the video surveillance is functional. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and hacking into the surveillance system. We can find a way to access core systems and retrieve confidential scientific data. Or we can dismantle and prepare useful resources for extraction. Just do the dismantling. I don't think I want to do any international espionage right now. I feel like that's not going to end well for me. Uh, it does look like... What's our cargo ship doing? Is he actually, like, doing stuff right now? Oh, yeah, look, he's going and he's trucking it on in. There we go. Okay, he's doing that Phantom 409 thing. Space trucking, space trucking. We're playing Elite Dangerous. We're space trucking. All right, so there's fitty food inside of there. That'll keep us going for a little while longer. Uh, we, we use like 16 food per cycle. So it goes pretty quickly, but he's back with the vittles, so that's nice. Uh, is the moon event resolving? Oh, it's got like a little progress meter. Thus far, I'm actually fairly impressed with like the actual UI and everything else of the game. Everything is intuitive. Like everything is exactly where you expect it to be. And speaking of which, look at how gorgeous this menu is right here. Look at how it throws sun shadows across like the debris and the belts. Like look at the lighting and everything. What an absolutely gorgeous game. Just a true feast for the eyes right there. All right, so, all that's been said already. The camp has been disassembled. Even though the equipment was damaged, we were able to prepare some usable resources for extraction. Nice. Okay, uh, so, like, do I have to send a cargo vessel to go get that? Oh, hold on, Moshi Moshi. Administrator, I have an incoming transmission from Dolus's head of medicine, Dr. Abhinav Munchi. Hit me with it, Dr. Munchy. Greetings, Administrator. I'm Dr. Abhinav Munchy, Dolo's expert in compartmentalism and medicine, and a member of the Marduk Council. I'm glad to finally meet you, even in this digital manner. Your psychological test results were quite impressive. My friend and colleague, Philip Stanford, couldn't be here today, so I will take the role of introducing you to the final stages of the Vol engine integration. Before we get into that, however, 
we would like you to complete the testing station's exploration and enhancement capabilities. You'll then be able to begin researching the EVA airlock and assess its compatibility with the Tycoon's core systems. I hope that the work of our team will ensure that you're equipped to deal with most situations you encounter up there. Before I leave you, Stanford would like me to remind you that space is a far less fanciful and forgiving environment than science fiction would have us believe. It would be wise to remember that. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, space is kind of terrifying, dude. I've seen all of the alien movies. I know exactly how scary it can get up here. We still have some polymers left. We've still got, like, loads and loads and loads of food. Uh, it wants me to build a tech lab. That's going to be the building where we do research because... Let's see, docking bay? Nope, don't need that. There's the tech lab. But the tech lab is like a big, big lady. Like, the, the tech lab is beefy, okay? It's a little bit of a chonk monster. So I'm going to... This is ugly. I don't want to do this. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll put a road in over this way. And maybe we'll put a road in over this way. How much does the tech lab cost in power? 12 in power? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get us another stockpile for metal down here. Uh, just so it's close to the distribution zone. And we're going to load everything up inside of here. We have tons and tons and tons of stuff laying. Let's go ahead and speed her on up while we wait for that to happen. We don't really have any pressing concerns right now. We've got more food and, like, you know, McDonald's cheeseburgers than we know what to do with. Like, they're not double cheeseburgers. I wish that they were. But sometimes we have to tighten our belt and, you know, settle for less when you're in a hostile environment. All right, so if you guys could clear that and clear... Actually, I don't know if we're going to need to clear... How big is this thing? So, like, let me, let me get a good idea of the footprint that this requires. This requires a chonk monster of a footprint. So what I'm sort of thinking is, we don't really have a great place to put it, except for right here. And so I would say let's destroy this road right here, and then we'll build a new road that sort of runs this way, a better road. And now that we've got that road locked, we can start offloading this little paddock right here. And once we get this clear, I think we'll continue building out this way to clear the next one as well. Can you disintegrate for me? Thank you. Keep her trucking right there. Constructobot 5000, come forth and lay some asphalt. We have used the combined scientific prowess of humanity simply to lay down asphalt because that's what we do. Oh, there's more polymers over there as well. All right, so now we have the footprint to get this thing in. So let's get that thing rocking. It's going to take 75 metals to get this thing moving. That's a big project. I'm going to let them take care of it. Uh, I think we have more than enough laying around, but I'll come back once it's all nice and done. Okay, so we're all nice and locked and loaded with the research. It wants me to get the EVA airlock, and we can do that through the technology tree over here. Uh, we have access to some things, but everything outside these initial two rings right here is unfortunately going to be locked for the purposes of the demo. So let's go ahead and we'll get the EVA airlock done. It's going to be done in like a day and a half. Uh, we can do some light managerial tasks while we wait, so I think we can offload some of the polymers, no problem. And we're pretty much full up on steel right now. So there's not really a lot of tasks to get done. I love that little meter right here. The team at Casito has done such a good job with the UI of this game. Everything is clear and bright and obvious. And like, you know, even, even a big dummy like me can't miss it all. Something to be said about idiot-proof things. So build an EVA airlock. Let's have a look. So it is a structure. This thing is freaking enormous. Okay. It's going to take us a little bit of doing to get it done. But that's never really stopped me before, so I guess we'll stamp it in over there. I'm going to give it a road connection right there. Hopefully that's enough. I don't know. They've got to get to it, though. Also, I really, really like... I was taking a look, and they build these things compartmentally. So as they like, as the constructor bot works on it, and as it adds parts to it... It actually, like, materializes in different little pieces of rebar and machinery and everything else get added to the footprint, which is really, really great. Uh, I don't know how we're looking right now on resources. 
We should have enough in stockpile to get this done. But we are going to have to loot some of these paddocks. Like, they're going to have to get cleared out. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll loot this guy and we'll loot this guy to make a little bit more space. EVA airlock is underway. If you don't know what an EVA is, EVA is basically a place where people can suit up to spacewalk and go outside. I'm guessing that this guy right here is going to allow us to build on the surface of the station uh, so that we can actually populate the ring with things like power, for example, which I almost guarantee you is next. Power supply overloaded. Yeah, that's about what I thought. That's about what I thought. So they want me to construct the Vol engine via the construction panel in the exterior view. That said, let's go on out to the Tycoon exterior. And I think we should probably... What is that right there? The Vol engine, it takes 100? Okay, we need power first. Do all these supply like the exact same thing? So with a medium one right there, that's kind of pricey. I don't know if we can afford that. Let's slap that bad boy on so that we have some extra power. I'd actually like to watch and see if they, they actually spacewalk out here to go do it. That's what I'd be interested in. Like, are we going to see little astronauts come out and start, like, scattering and getting this thing ready to rock? I may need to do... Oh, we got a transmission. Hold on. Administrator, due to insufficient levels of electricity generation... Sector 1's power demand has overloaded. Stanford routines recommend that you construct an external solar panel to boost overall electrical output. Okay. Done. I will empower you, Tycoon, for you are my home, floating high above the orb. I'm going to take a rough guess and say there's a pretty good chance that they aren't going to be able to use the EVA airlock unless the power is back on. Power I'm going to power down our technology center so that we can get that moving. And I think we have enough stuff on hand. Let's wait and watch and see if anybody actually tries to spacewalk. Actually, it looks like the bots are handling it. Let's go out to the station view and see what that looks like. does rotate though so it's possible that it's not centered the way that it was before mm, it says that it's being constructed but I don't see it being construct oh there it goes right there dude I don't see any little guys doing it though I think it's just materializing okay so now we have 85 power so we're like in much better condition uh, let's go back to there it is. I was going to say, I lost my base, man. I'm lost. I need an adult. I'm lost. I'm in space, and I need an adult. All right, so that's done. That means we can power this bad boy back on. There we go. We're still hurting a little bit for electricity, but I don't want to go too wild and crazy. Constructs so in the external view. It wants me to do the Vol engine, huh? All right. Let's Vol it on up. Oh, yeah. we're Dude, look at all those thrusters. Yeah, this thing's going to get some mad speed. Yup, Vin Diesel style. This is going to be sick. Oh, there it goes. Administrator, the different phases of preparation, calibration, and verification were successfully completed. You must now start the full bonding procedure. Dolo's protocols now deem you competent to gather resources, knowledge, and test colonization routines once you reach Proxima Centauri. Before you do so, Vanir Dolos, Marduk Council Founder and Dolos CEO, wants to talk to you. Hello, Administrator. I'm glad to see that you have managed to complete your assignments in preparation for this unique moment in history. You must understand that this is not simply another chapter in humanity's story. The book of our life on Earth is over, and we stand now at its epilogue. It saddens me to think that there are many who have yet to comprehend the reality of our situation. We've endured endless cycles of war, crisis, and famine. Still, the worst is yet to come. 
There are others like Dolos who have prepared for this outcome, but most of our kind remain sheltered from the horror of the predicament we find ourselves in. This pale ghost of civilization will wither and die, and with it, the tenets and values of the past. As we prepare to leave this system for the first time, perhaps we must decide which fragments we will pick up and take forward with us. Through Dolos, I am offering mankind an alternative means of survival. The Tycoon is a tablet upon which we will carve our new history. Do you recognize why I have done all of this? Having foreseen our fate, I became fixated on altering it. I set about fashioning the ropes and tying the knots that would bind together this magnificent ship. It is true that our time in this world is brief, but at least I can rest assured knowing that my legacy will endure for eons. Farewell, Administrator. For the few who stand in the light, and the many who dwell in the dark, you carry the fate of us all. How come you're not on the ship with me, bro? You keep saying stuff like us. I don't see you strapped to this giant bomb. Oh, dude. So we can actually move into the orbit of the moon? Okay. Oh. I guess it kind of makes sense that it's silent because there's no sound in space, but I thought it was going to be like, and then it was just going to play like Motley Crue's like Kickstart My Heart or something. I don't know. I feel like we are owed Motley Crue's Kickstart My Heart while we blast ourselves into space, okay? Like maybe, maybe we don't deserve it, but like I think that like that should be the first thing we do is, you know, Motley Crue's Kickstart My Heart while we turn on some awesome jet boosters and rocket towards the moon. You've got to have the proper music to set the stage, man. It's either that or I guess we could go with like Shame, Shame, Shame by Rat. That's also another good space travel song, I think, for like a space travel montage. Did we make it? Oh, I think we did make it. Another phone call. Because of your continued successful management of the tycoon, Dolos have authorized the dispatch of new crew members and food supplies. Please ensure that they have suitable accommodation once you reach Proxima Centauri. Alright. Sounds good to me. Planetary system map. Initiate Vol Engine. Charging. Got like, do we have like a bad spark plug or something? Why? Is it gun? Is it doing it? Oh, it's got a little progress meter. I jumped that because I wanted to see the cinematic experience. So like, I didn't have my little cinematic experience button. Full engine ready. Do it. Earth, our home, she is unique. Held in its bosom are the ingredients of evolution. Beyond raw survival, 
beyond the safety of comfort, we, humanity, pursue something greater. We have learnt, persevered, shaped our knowledge from that which is found in the furthest realms of science. However, humanity has brought destruction to the earth, polluted its blood, choked its breath. Today we are paying the price for this. We know the taste of a dying world. But the earth is not to be our grave. A mother does not wish to see her children disappear with her. She wishes to see instead courage in her children to carry on. Dolos carries this courage. We have gone further than any nation, moved faster than any corporation, hand in hand with those who, like us, carry that courage. The Tycoon Station is both an epilogue of these endeavors and a prologue to humanity's next steps. Our Council of Scientists leads the vanguard. They know, as do we all, that the survival of humanity now depends on what we glimpse out there in the dark. That we are masters of our own destiny. That we must go as a species bound together, pushing further into the unknown. We set sail on this new sea because there is hope to be found, horizons to explore, and because our very existence depends on it. I give you the stars. I give you the Vol Engine. I'm gonna chalk that up as an oops. That that's a my bad. I'm sorry I destroyed the earth with with chunks of the moon's ass. I didn't mean to. Impressive. I'm excited about it. I like just about everything that I've seen so far. I think everything from the graphical presentation to the UI design is all very tasteful. It's all got kind of like a low sci-fi, retro futuristic, you know, space odyssey type feel to it. And I'm excited to play the final version. I will see you guys all later. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today we had Ixion. Tomorrow we will likely have something else. Thank you for hanging out with me. I very much appreciate it. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.